Thank you everyone who uh, is attending today. And thank you for anyone that watches this after the fact. Um, I'm Dan. I'm Mark. And we are with Blue Key Media, a video production marketing agency here in the Twin Cities, focused on helping organizations and marketers like you guys create more effective video through strategic content. So um, we're really hoping that you guys can pull some value out of the webinar today. You want to pull the slides up on the screen? I'll let you do that. So thanks guys for joining us for this webinar on how to plan and budget for video in your 2019 marketing strategy. Uh, in the next 45 minutes, we're going to cover a lot of ground on this topic. And really our goal is for you to walk away with a stronger understanding of how to plan your video content so you can feel more confident as you build video into your marketing strategy next year and ultimately you know get better results perfect so first we're going to start with introductions like we said i'm dan and this is mark i'm the executive producer at blue key media um, and i've been doing video for about six to seven years now worked in uh, a corporation doing video for them and a marketing agency uh, and now full-time at Blue Key Media helping organizations and people like you create really great content. And what gets me excited is, is just uh, being able to help people change the mindset of the way they think about video. Because there's so many people out there who um, aren't thinking uh, through video in a very strategic way. And, and when you do, like the results are amazing. So that's what gets me fired up and that's why I'm excited about today. Right on, and I'm Mark and I'm the creative director here at Blue Key Media. And I wear a lot of hats, just like Dan, but I'm kind of more uh, focused on the video strategy and the creative work that happens before we go and shoot uh, for a certain production. And uh, sometimes I oversee the creative on, on the editing and afterwards. I've also got seven years of video production background, just kind of like Dan. I've also been in an agency, I've got a freelance background helping small businesses and uh, I have a degree in media and video production. Sweet, let's hop into the, uh, the presentation. So yeah, video and your marketing strategy, that's where we're gonna start. And in this section, we're going to define what success means in your video project. Uh, we're going to share our three-part approach to effective video. Uh, we're gonna talk about creating video that supports your marketing objectives. And then we're going to talk about some tools to help develop your video strategy. So what is effective video? What does it mean to create effective video content for your business or your organization? Uh, we use this term a lot, so we're going to give you our definition, which is this. It's video content that produces an intended outcome. So video is not an end in and of itself. It's a way to communicate your message to your audience, elicit some type of response from them. Uh, your video is effective when it gets the response that you were hoping for, uh, whether that's subscribing to your blog, purchasing your product, or watching your next video. An effective video gets the results you want and need for your business. Right, and so how do we get to effective video? So now I just wanna walk through what our three-part approach is for effective video. And we've created a lot of videos over the years, some with big wins and some with big fails. And time and time again, what we've noticed from successful video is that it consists of three parts. It consists of a strong, solid strategy, which is the base and foundation to an entire video. Um, you know, great production, something that's gonna keep people engaged, and then a thoroughly thought out uh, distribution plan. So like I said, with strategy, it's really the foundation for the entire video. It's you know, giving the direction and creating clarity for your film. It's considering you know, how does this video work in the overall business strategy and marketing strategies? How are other tactics going to be supporting the video that you guys are creating? Um, in the buyer's journey and, and the purchasing decision of your customers. Um, and, and then also considering you know, your, your target audience and how do you craft this in such a way that it, it resonates with who you're trying to have it sell with. So this is essential. You gotta get this right in order for the other parts to fall into place. Uh, and then next is production, which encompasses filming and editing. And really, you know, it, it goes without saying that 
solid video production um, is just really going to engage your audience more. It's going to have people invested in your story longer, uh, the story that you're trying to tell. You know, when production is lacking, people can still watch it as long as there's a great story. Uh, but when you have great strategy and really awesome looking production, that's when people really get drawn in and immersed in your story. Uh, and, and when that falls short, your audience can become distracted. They can move on because um, people's time is valuable. So, and lastly, we want to talk about distribution, which is critical to having your video seen. Without a solid distribution strategy, you know, your amazing video that you spent $20,000 on uh, may not be seen by a single person. And this is the part where most people overlook, you know, they think, hey, all I need is a great video and then, you know, it's gonna do the rest and, and they just put it on their website, they put it on YouTube and it just collects dust. So thinking, you know, how are we going to engage with our audience on this? Oh, she video feed, oh, okay. So really thinking, um, you know, how are you gonna engage with your audience? You know, are you going to be posting on social media? What kind of, you know, posts and comment or text are you going to have along with it? Are you going to be boosting it because uh, a video or some sort of post on social media without uh, advertising dollars behind it really doesn't succeed um, unless you have just a really great network that you can tap into? Are you going to be reaching out to influencers um, and that are in your buyer circle to help promote and circulate the video. So really considering these things is important. And this is an example of what success looks like when you align all three steps. So this is a project we, we did with a recycling program in Southwest Minnesota. And their problem was they needed to raise awareness about this new mattress recycling program that they had going on. They tried so many different approaches. They had, you know, done radio. They had done um, some small, like really small ads just on the local cable television. Um, they had done print in newspapers and nothing was working. Uh, and so they wanted to try and find a unique creative way that they could engage the community um, to, to learn about this program. So our approach was creating a community feel good piece, kind of a mini documentary uh, that would go viral within the community and that people could really rally behind. And, and so we spent a lot of time on the strategy and the pre-production um, and just figuring out who's our target audience, um, you know, who are the people that we really need to connect with and what's important to them, what, what do they really value and what compels them to share a video like this. And then, you know, we spent time doing pre-interviews with every single person that could potentially be a character in our video. And then we start piecing it all together on how do we create a compelling story. We had a two day shoot uh, with the two person crew, Mark and I went down there um, and we're just capturing the story. Uh, and then we delivered a four minute mini documentary film and the results were great. Well, oh, I forgot to mention distribution. Um, we really thought this out, um, you know, we engaged other community pages like the City of Marshall, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, and other uh, networks that had a following that was in the community. We reached out to local news organizations uh, to have them pick up the story. Uh, we created some social, uh, some uh, television edits, 30 and 60 seconds to be played. And then we reached out to just a lot of family, friends within the community and just started connecting with the people we knew, asking them to share. and. And uh, the results were amazing. Within the first two weeks, we gained, uh, well, I shouldn't say we, they gained two new additional mattress recycling partners. One was another city about two hours away that was incinerating all their mattresses and said, hey, let's just redirect them to your facility. Uh, they organically reached over 14,000 people in the community within two weeks, and the video was shared over 180 times. Uh, and that's without any sort of advertising support, um, which, you know, they haven't, gone forward with that yet, even though we pushed really hard for them to do that, uh, which would have just brought their video up to the next level. Um, and then it also increased mattress recycling due to the video. So people were coming in and they're saying, hey, we saw this video and, uh, you know, we thought it was really great. So we brought our our mattress in. So that's what success looks like when you align all three. And, and that's, you know, really what we're hoping uh, that marketers and organizations and businesses do with their video content. So kind of back to the strategy component, you know, working video into your marketing strategy, I want to talk about creating video to accomplish those marketing objectives that you have. 
So this might seem like a no-brainer, but we actually see it a lot with video where a business will come to us, they ask us to create a video for them, they don't necessarily know why. They just want a video. Uh, they had an idea, so they just reached out. And in those cases, uh, they're creating video basically for the sake of having a video that they wanted. And those videos almost never perform well. So before you even think about what kinds of videos you should create and what they might look like, uh, think about what it's going to do for your business. Have a really clear vision about that. Um, so as you can see in this graphic, uh, you, you wanna start with your business goals translated into your marketing objectives, and those are gonna be translated into the different marketing tactics that you employ um, to accomplish those marketing objectives. And video is just one of those tactics. So what does that look like? I wanna share an example with you guys on what a business goal looks like translated into a marketing tactic, all the way down through objectives and strategy. Um, so we start with a business goal here of increased sales revenue by 25% at the end of the year. You translate that into your different marketing objectives. So. In order to increase sales, we're going to get more traffic to our website, and then we're going to convert those website visitors uh, into leads uh, for our sales team to close on. So the strategy for that might look like, you know, driving new unique visitors to the website from social media, because in this case, we'll say that's where the audience is. Um, and then we need to improve our website conversion rates by updating the existing content to be more engaging like with video. So that's where you can see in the marketing tactics. Um, so for number one, driving traffic from social media, the tactic 1A is running Facebook video ads that are targeted towards you know, the intended audience. And then two, improve website conversion rates. Uh, the tactic would be uh, add an explainer video to a product page that might better demonstrate the value of that product to uh, the website visitor and, and cause them to take an action, uh, take the next step. So, you know, there might be other marketing tactics to support those individual objectives, like 1A, 1B, 1C, and so on. Uh, but really they're all, should be working together uh, to accomplish those objectives. Right, and, and when you forget to tie them back to goals, to objectives, um, wouldn't you say like the video lacks uh, clarity a lot of the times. There's no clear call to action for the audience to really grab onto. And people are just kind of wondering what's what's the point of this video. Um, so it's, you're right, it's just so important to be able to tie that right back to the goals that you have set, the strategy, and having some sort of, you know, KPI performance indicator that you can um, make sure that you're, you're tracking to see if the video is doing something. Right. It really just comes down to having clear goals. And yeah. To know if your video is effective or not, you need to have some way to measure the success. Right, right. So let's transition into talking about some tools to help you develop your video strategy. Um, what's your process for that? Uh, if you don't have one, if you've maybe tried you know, developing your video strategy and you've tried a bunch of different things, hopefully this is helpful to you because these are different tools that we use when we develop uh, video strategy. So the buyer's journey and the sales funnel. You're probably familiar with these, so I won't spend much time explaining what these are, but if you don't know about these, do some research on them. It'll really help you in your strategy process uh, just to understand these concepts. So I'll just give a quick definition of these and then share how we use these in the process of developing video strategy. So the buyer's journey is the process your buyers go through to become aware of your product or service consider and evaluate it and then decide to purchase it. And the sales funnel uh, just really maps out the same journey of your buyers from stranger to customer, but defines who the buyer is by where they are in your sales process. They're essentially one in the same. The sales funnel graphic though is, is based on whatever sales model your business uses and how you define uh, your customer in different stages of that sales process. But if you wanna plan effective video content, you need to have a very intimate understanding of your buyer's journey in your sales funnel because you want your videos to resonate with your buyer and, and provide them with value. And to do that, you have to know where they're at in this process. 
So we use these to help translate those marketing objectives into video content that is going to ultimately accomplish them. Yeah. And, you know, the, the whole purpose of this is just so that you understand the mindset of where your customer is at, you know. The mindset's different on every single one of these stages, awareness, consideration, decision, or if you like the sales funnel, your customer has different wants, different intentions, different needs at every single different stage. So that's why that's why we really uh, enjoy using these tools. So what does that look like? Let's let's uh, let's look at some examples here. So you've got awareness, consideration, decision, and underneath you've got some kinds of videos that are more optimized towards each stage. Um, a couple slides back, an example marketing objective was to increase traffic to the website by 50% from last year. So with an objective like that, the first thing we'll do is identify which stage of the buyer's journey that objective applies to. And in that case, increasing website traffic, that is an awareness stage uh, objective. So our video content needs to be targeted towards people in the awareness stage of the buyer's journey. So the next thing we do is think about which kinds of videos might resonate with this particular buyer and this particular stage. So in awareness, we might do a brand anthem video um, or a social media video that drives them to the website to learn more about uh, something they're just becoming aware of or interested in. Uh, so to increase our website traffic, we're gonna to need to extend our reach. Uh, we need more people to hear about us and what we can offer them. So how do you reach those buyers? Well, it depends on who they are. Uh, if our buyer spends a lot of time on social media, we might create a series of short videos that are optimized uh, towards whatever platform that they're on. In the example of the sales funnel, uh, you know, here we've identified a problem area in our sales funnel, which is converting website visitors into leads. So it's not that awareness stage where we're driving traffic to the website. We've already got plenty of visits to the website. Now we're just having a difficult time converting the visitors into leads. So how can a video address this problem and better convert those video uh, visitors into leads? Um, what video we want to create is going to be content that's going to show the buyer the value of what we're offering and, and prompt them to take a first step, like downloading a content offer that they're willing to give up information for, like their name and email, so sales can contact them. Or uh, this might be an explainer video on your homepage or product page that just educates your buyer uh, and gives them some kind of a valuable insight that they can take away and something that points them to the next step in their journey, which might be you know, a downloadable content offer or something that you can use to nurture and just keep providing value to them. Yeah, and one of the great things about these tools is uh, you're self-diagnosing and through that self-diagnosis, you're able to come up with ideas for, for videos. So you don't have to you know, reinvent the wheel. You don't have to think, of, okay, what's this really you know, cool thing that we're gonna do? And then, okay, how does that apply back to our objectives or our strategy? Uh, when you go through this process of using the sales funnel, the buyer's journey, you're self-diagnosing what your needs are, where you really need video, um, and then you're gonna create effective video from it. You're not gonna create pointless video. Uh, that's you know, just there to, to look cool or, or to look super professional. Uh, so that's why we, we really like these tools. Okay, so now we're gonna transition into the uh, kind of, we, we just talked about the strategy side and, and how to kind of formulate the types of videos you're gonna do. And now we're gonna talk about planning, the planning portion um, and how do you figure out, you know, what are you all gonna need to create these videos, you know, how do you plan and uh, budget effectively for the amount of time that you'll need, um, and, and set you really up for success so that your execution is great. So just some general guidelines here for planning. You know, I, I can't stress enough the importance of planning your video content as thoroughly as you can and as early as possible. There's just too many moving parts to try and throw together your video content last minute. It just doesn't work. If you want your videos to be effective, you gotta plan ahead. Um, you will have better success if you split the year into quarters and, and, and think about the video content that you're gonna create this year 
from that mindset. So quarter one, quarter two, what are your videos going to do? What kind of videos are they going to be? How do they fit into the rest of your marketing strategy or other tactics? You don't want to take it uh, quarter by quarter that way. And really the upcoming quarter is the one you can plan in a lot of detail. The, the other quarters are just kind of an outline or overview. And, and plans might change throughout the year, but it's, it's good to just have a plan and know where your content sits throughout the year and what it's going to do for you. So, you know, your timelines are going to vary when you plan, but uh, it really just depends on the scope of the video. So, you know, timelines do vary, like I said, from video to video, but the different components to plan for are basically the same every time. So you're going to want to think about the same components, things when you're planning each video. Um, and before I walk through this graphic, just know that the amount of planning you'll need to do depends on what resources you have available in-house as well. So if you have the ability to create video content in-house, you'll probably be planning a lot of these different things. If you're outsourcing, you'll have help planning as much or as little as you need help with, really. Uh, and outsourcing can start anywhere in this process. You could bring someone in to handle all of it from the very beginning, uh, which they do. Um, or just a few components of it. Maybe you're doing all the planning and the filming, um, and they just need to edit it because you don't have the ability to do that. Or maybe they're just doing the filming and you're editing. Uh, but whatever the case, it's best to contact a potential partner early before you need them. So as you see strategy, you start with your video objectives and, and goals, and you're gonna plan through all of those components down through creative, um, where you start to identify the key insights. Uh, and this is really where you figure out what your video is gonna look like. You just script it out, you're going to figure out all the different uh, parts of filming, what's gonna be involved, uh, and then to plan all of that, to line up all the logistics, uh, th this is a critical portion, uh, the pre-production end. You know, doing location scouting, talent sourcing, you're gonna be doing your storyboards, your shot listing. Um, are you gonna need to rent gear? Are you gonna need to hire crew? So this is a critical piece uh, of the process. A lot to consider, the production, uh, post-production, this is the editing. Um, in our process, we like to consider how many client revisions are there gonna be. We wanna show the clients the video we create early on in the editing process and then frequently throughout. So they can have input as we put it together. So they're not seeing a final video and going, hey, this isn't what we thought it would be. Um, so that we kind of include them in every, every step of the way every step of that process. And then distribution, um, once you have your final video, it's, it's executing on that distribution plan that you thought about from the very beginning. You wanna think through all these uh, steps in distribution, where you're gonna share it uh, during that strategy phase, and then you're gonna execute after you got the final video. So that's how you know the process looks, and, and this is how that process kind of breaks down into you know, a project timeline that's linear. Um, here's what an, an average project timeline might look like for us. Uh, you know, on the front end, there's a couple of weeks of creative development, uh, making sure that we are going to accomplish the marketing objectives, accomplish the goals with um, what the video is. So that's a critical piece of it. Setting ourselves up for success happens in that creative development of a couple of weeks. We want to give us ourselves enough time to do that. Um, and then after that, there's, you know, the longest portion of, of the project timeline, which is pre-production. That's all that planning that needs to go into it. Um, production is, is typically the shortest. It's just filming what you need to. It typically happens in one week. It might be multiple days in one week. It might just be one day, but usually happens one week. And then uh, the rest of, of the timeline is spent on editing. And that's, that's a couple weeks, um, maybe three or four when you consider all the client revisions and the back and forth. And if there's multiple videos, it might be even longer. And after you're, uh, you know, you have a, a deliverable, your finished video, that's when you're gonna start your distribution, um, wherever you plan to share that video. Awesome, yeah, and every single timeline, 
could look different. This is like Mark said, what is going to look at what it's going to look like for us most of the time because we're doing um, a lot of the times larger projects um, like brand videos or um, ad campaigns or things like that where it takes a long time to plan all these things. But if you're doing stuff in house, if you're doing your own content um, or, or just looking to create more like content uh, strategy, vlogs, uh, how to walk through videos, things like that, um, you know, it, it may be truncated and you're able to do it in four weeks and you don't have as much creative and a lot of it's more pre production because, you know, you're reusing old content that you might have and, and turning it into video or things like that. So just know that your timeline may change, but just make sure you consider every one of those steps. So next we're gonna talk about needs assessment and what is that? And this is gonna help you figure out what your timeline is, is gonna look like on the pre-production, production, production uh, and post-production side. This happens after your creative is done and your strategy. And you're really just assessing, okay, what, what are we all gonna need? What's, what's everything that's gonna go into the video? that we need to consider. So how many days will you be filming for? How many crew members will it take? Will you need talent? Uh, and if so, like there's the process of finding them and um, holding auditions and then choosing them. Are you gonna use employees or friends? Um, are you gonna need animation? And then you have to plan for all that in pre-production and know what that's gonna look like going into production so then post-production is pretty seamless. Uh, are you going to need to write a script beforehand? We recommend outlining every video you do, uh, but not all video necessarily needs a script. Um, or are you going to be doing interview questions? That's a, an alternative we see a lot of the time. Uh, do you need a voiceover, music license, and what type of music license usage are you going to have? Your number of videos, the length of videos, distribution and advertising costs. Uh, are you going to need to location scout? There's just a lot of different things you need to factor in. That's going to affect your project timeline. How much time do you need in pre-production? Uh, and then also it's going to affect your budget. So now we're going to talk about budgeting for video and, and what that looks like. And, you know, this, this is something that we get asked all the time. How much does video cost? And there's no, you know, silver bullet for this. Um, it's, it's like buying a house, right? There's all sorts of different types of houses. There's size of house, um, you know, that's gonna affect the quality or the cost. There's the location, the market's different in California versus Minnesota. Uh, and then there's all the fixtures and amenities inside, which, you know, can jack up the price. So, you know, it, it's, it's hard, but we're gonna try and give you some general guidelines. And then we're gonna walk through some examples of videos that we've done and break down the cost. So. Here's some general guidelines. First, we tell people your budget should relatively match with the objectives or desired outcomes that you're looking to achieve. So, I mean, this is not like a golden rule where it doesn't, you know, if doesn't always follow this, uh, but kind of be thinking in that where if, if you're looking to increase sales by 100,000 or, you know, get, gain six new clients that are valued at $15,000 each, is a budget of 5,000 going to accomplish effectively, you know, the goals that you're looking to, to accomplish? Um, or is $20,000 gonna get you, get you there uh, where the 5,000 just simply might not? I mean, you could get there with 5,000, but could you get there even faster, even better, even more efficient with a larger budget? So kind of be considering that um, and, and also realize that's one of the beauties of video. You invest 20,000 and you might see a huge return, a huge ROI of, you know, 300, 500% and you didn't even have to pay that much. I think, you know, there are statistics out there that show marketers claim video as the number one return on investment out of all marketing initiatives, which we love to see and, and uh, we understand that. So just be considering that. Uh, and then second, you know, with the needs assessment, consider all the factors including distribution costs, you're gonna probably be advertising this or displaying it somewhere, which is gonna cost money. So factor that in, don't forget that. And then just realize that pricing varies across the spectrum, like I said, but for hiring a quality production agency, expect at starting at about 5,000 uh, and then it ranges from there. You know, you have a 30 second commercial that may cost 
a hundred thousand dollars, you see that on the Super Bowl or more. Um, or you might have a five minute video that only costs ten thousand dollars. So length does not determine pricing. Uh, it's it's about you know what all goes into the video. So next we're gonna just break down uh, some different projects that we've done. And we're going to go back to the recycling video that we had talked about that had some really great success uh, within the first couple of weeks. So we spent three days on pre-production. So that's about 24 hours worth of, of work on just interviewing people. And we probably spent even more. Um, but interviewing uh, pre-interviews and, you know, taking all those pre-interviews and then distilling it down into a story. Yeah, I mean, it was like three weeks Four weeks of time of it's pre production, pre production, creative, yeah. You know, three full days collectively, the hours we put in there, yeah. but it was over the span of almost yeah. a month. It was about three to four days. It was a multi day shoot with two people, uh, myself and Mark. And honestly, we could have used a larger crew. Um, it was delivered, uh, we delivered a four minute feature, uh, kind of this mini documentary style, and then a 30 and 60 second TV spot. Um, and the budget included advertising on social media channels like Facebook. Um, and that costed about 10,000, uh, but easily could have gone up to 20,000 um, if they would have invested more in the advertising. You know, we thought that for something like this, they could have been investing somewhere around you know, 5,000 over the course of six months or, or even more. Um, and if we had more crew to work with, we could have been able to capture more elements um, and, and just had a little bit more of a, a polished feel. When you only have two people, there's only so much you guys can, like only so much we can do and capture. So we would have just been able to, to get more elements. Um, but somewhere for that, it, it was about 10 to 20,000. Um, this next one is a common one that a lot of people are creating. It's company about us and overview videos. Um, and usually that consists of a day of filming, a, a two person crew. We leverage all employees. We, I mean, there are times when we do voiceover, but most of the time we're doing interviews to tell the narrative. Uh, and then it's about a two to three minute video that we deliver. And that is looking around six to 7,000 um, and then can scale if you have multiple locations, if you're looking to get more creative and have more of a, a voiceover uh, storytelling type feel, um, and you're traveling all over the place. So, but about six to 7,000 is, is a good estimate for people who are planning for something like that. Uh, we did a social media shoot this year, delivered uh, 10, 15 to 30 second social media edits. It was a full day of production where we had a two person crew, uh, cinematographer and, and director producer. We rented a studio space for it for the day, and we had about 10 different dancers involved, um, plus about four people on the client side. Uh, and that investment was about 8,000 for the production, eight to 9,000, and um, when you include all the different expenses. Um, and, and then there are some more expenses on the client's end with distribution, we weren't involved with that part. But that's to give you an idea of what something like that may look like. Um, and they saw really great success with this. This is the second year that uh, we've partnered with the agency we worked with and um, the, the client to create these. And um, they've seen a lot of traffic growth just through their website off this. Right. And those videos were for uh, like a new product line that they were launching. Yeah. So an investment of eight or 9,000 might seem like a lot for videos that you're just releasing on social media, but it, it caused a lot of people to go to their website and buy product right so there was definitely a great return for them on that investment and, and orders aren't cheap um so i mean all it takes is to get so many orders before you've made back your investment and and the great thing about these things is they're they are repurposing the videos and the footage that was captured from that day for more content um which is a, a great tip for uh people who are looking to uh, maximize their budget with video is is repurposing footage and, and content yeah, they're not only selling uh, product with these videos, they're engaging mm -hmm. their audience on social media and building a stronger following too right. by releasing quality content. Right. Yep. And then uh, last is this explainer video. This is something uh, we didn't actually execute on, but we were pitching on this. Uh, and it was a two to three minute, very polished, high end looking explainer video with lots of different uh, premium animations throughout it. 
there is going to be 20 to 25 talent involved, two major roles. One, you know, one of them was, it was going to be this very humorous kind of witty talking to the camera and going through the struggles of, you know, the product that they were selling. And then about uh, five supporting roles and a handful of extras. It was a 10 to 15 person crew on top of the 20 to 25 talent. Uh, there's going to be per permits pulled for different locations. Uh, and like I said, three day production. And that was an investment starting at 60,000, but easily could have scaled to 100,000. Uh, and that's not including advertising costs that they're going to put behind it, uh, which I mean, just from some initial conversations, it was a lot. In, in the hundreds of thousands that they're putting behind Facebook, Instagram advertising. Um, so that's just to give you an idea of how video can scale and become really expensive. And, and a lot of the factors are just more people, more moving parts, uh, and more days of production. Um, and, and that's when you start seeing things scaling up. And, and you know, we wouldn't always recommend putting that much money behind a video, but, uh, with the goals that they had of you know doubling the revenue that they're making and, and hitting search and revenue goals over the course of four years it was an investment that was worth it for them right they had investors um were investing money into their business but you know and they're they're challenging them to grow really fast yeah <laughs> and they thought if we want to grow we got to have some great video content explaining what our product is right so finally, I just want to leave you with some words of advice, tips for making the most of your budget. You know, we talked about repurposing content and, and repurposing the video you have, uh, but bundling multiple videos into one project. A lot of the times we see clients come to us and say, hey, we want to make this, uh, you know, training video. We create it for them. And then about a month later, they come back and say, hey, we want to create another training video. Uh, and they could have saved a lot of money and we could have done it all in one day of production if we would have spent some time beforehand mapping out the strategy and and just figuring out what their game plan was and then identifying okay we could actually do this whole list of videos that's going to help with your um, you know kind of customer satisfaction after people buy the product or or just the sales funnel if we would have spent some planning, uh, spend time planning. And then second would be creating long-term deals with production companies. A lot of the times you'll see uh, companies being willing to offer discounts if you create a you know six-month contract or a year-long contract. And, and if you take the time to map out, you know, hey, we're going to do three shoots over the course of a year. And then on each shoot, we're going to do all this content. You're going to edit it, you know, create these videos. And then we'll do kind of the same thing with new content. Uh, so that can be a great way to, um, you know, just cut down on, on costs. And then, you know, what we've been saying time and time again, just dedicate enough time to pre-production to avoid mistakes because you can avoid a lot of mistakes in reshoots or trying to fix things in post if you plan and make sure you consider everything in the pre-production process. So that's a huge one. Uh, consider what can be done in-house versus outsourced. You know, are you able to handle a lot of the creative strategy and pre-production? And then you really just need someone to engage in the production and post-production, or do you need someone throughout the whole process? I mean, we get engaged all throughout the, the process. Sometimes we've helped people develop a strategy for them uh, and then come up with a creative based on that strategy, different video creatives. And then, you know, we do pre-production, production, post, and then we've, we can actually help people manage the distribution side and and uh, and help them distribute to the proper person on Facebook or Instagram doing the advertising. So, and then lastly, like I'd said, repurposing old content using white papers, blog posts uh, to really be the scripts or the ideas for your videos or uh, past shoots that you've done, and you just repurpose the the footage. So. Hopefully this has been a really helpful webinar session that kind of wraps up everything we wanted to cover. Uh, but if you guys have any sort of questions, you can feel free to reach out to us. Um, we want to quickly just give you guys some quick offers. So first we want to talk to you about our content offer that we've created for you. Yeah, so we put together a video strategy guide, and, and really that's just a, a three-page worksheet that... Four pages. Four pages. Yeah. Uh, that, that guides you through each step of 
building an effective video marketing plan. Um, it's gonna help you determine how video can best perform in your marketing strategy. And we're really excited to release this as a resource to you guys in, in coming up with what video content you're gonna create. And it also goes over some budgeting, mm -hmm. um, helps you consider every everything we've been talking about here. And it's kind of uh, condensed into one useful tool that's... Yeah, gives you some great charts, some great tables, things that we've talked about. Um, so really when you pair this webinar with this worksheet, uh, hopefully you guys will be set for creating your video strategies in 2019. That's the hope. And, and we'll send a copy to everyone uh, after the webinar in the follow-up email. Uh, we also want to mention a another offer that we want to give you guys, which is... Uh, a one hour video planning session with us, uh, with both of us here at Blue Key Media. And, and we want to work uh, through with you whatever strategy and planning challenges you're having with video content. Um, just to help you get over any hangups in the process and assist you in developing a solid game plan for your video content in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you want to, if you've got questions about your specific situation, um, reach out to us and we'll send you more information about that in the, in the follow-up email too. Yeah, so yeah, like you said, we'll send it on the follow-up email, how to take advantage of that. But if you're watching this um, after the fact that after we've hosted this webinar and you still want to take advantage of it, uh, just feel free to go to our website at bluekeymedia.net um, and fill out the contact form and we'd be happy to get back to you and, and uh, set up a time to chat. So. Thank you guys for attending our webinar. That is gonna be it for today. Um, and like I said, if you have any other questions, uh, you can feel free to follow up with us afterwards or uh, you can uh, ask them now.